Sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer that calls me from a world of care and bids me at my father's throne make all my wants and wishes known in seasons of distress and grief my soul has often found relief and oft escaped the tempter's snare by thy return sweet hour of prayer sweet hour of prayer sweet hour of prayer thy wings shall my petition bear to him whose truth and faithfulness engage the waiting soul to bless. And since he bids me seek his face, believe his word and trust his grace. I'll cast on him my every care and wait for thee, sweet hour of prayer. Oh, isn't it wonderful? Sweet hour of prayer. It is always sweet to come to him in prayer, isn't it? He just blesses, he relieves and and let you get built back up. What a wonderful Lord. Welcome to the reading of the Word of God on this frosty, cold winter day of January 21. January 21, we are in the book of Genesis, and we are in chapter 42, and we will pick up this morning with verse 18. Chapter 42, picking up with verse 18. Joseph has been raised up to be ruler in Egypt. And there's a great famine. And this is the second time that his brothers all travel from Canaan clear to Egypt to get food. All right. And let's see how this second time goes of their meeting. Because Joseph recognizes them right away. But now he looks very Egyptian, G Egyptian clothing, I'm sure, everything very different. And it's been a long while since they've seen him and they don't recognize him. So let's see as this plot thickens. Genesis 42, verse 18. Then Joseph said to him, his brothers, the third day, do this and live. For I fear God. If you are honest men, let one of your brothers be confined to your prison house. But you go and carry grain for the famine of your houses and bring your youngest brother to me so that your words will be verified and you shall not die. And they did so. And then they said to one another, We are truly guilty concerning our brother, for we saw the anguish of his soul when he pleaded with us, and we would not hear. Now that gives you another glimpse into when they threw him down in the well. He pleaded with them, and they would not hear. Therefore, this distress has come upon us. And Reuben answered them, saying, Did I not speak to you, saying, Do not sin against the boy? And you would not listen. Therefore, behold, his blood is now required of us. But they did not know that Joseph understood them. He's listening to the Hebrew. 
for he spoke to them through an interpreter. And he turned himself away from them and wept. And then he returned to them again, and he talked with them. And he took Simeon from them and bound him before their eyes. And I've often wondered what his choice was there with Simeon. Was Simeon the meanest to him when he was growing up? I don't know. The word doesn't say. And then Joseph gave a command to fill their sacks with grain, to restore every man's money to his sack, and to give them provisions for the journey. And thus he did for them. So they loaded their donkeys with the grain, and they departed from there. But as one of them opened his sack to give his donkey feed at the encampment, he saw his money. And there it was in the mouth of his sack. So he said to his brothers, My money has been restored, and there it is in my sack. And then their hearts failed them, and they were afraid, saying to one another, What is this? that God has done to us. And then they went to Jacob, their father, in the land of Canaan, and told him all that had happened to them, saying, the man who is Lord of the land spoke roughly to us and took us for spies of the country. But we said to him, we are honest men. We are not spies. We are 12 brothers, sons of our father. One is no more. And the youngest is with our father this day in the land of Canaan. And then the man, the Lord of the country, said to us, By this I will know that you are honest men. Leave one of your brothers here with me. Take food for the famine for your households and be gone and bring your youngest brother to me so I shall know that you are not spies, but that you are honest men. I will grant your brother to you and you may trade in the land. And then it happened as they emptied their sacks that surprisingly, each man's bundle of money was in his sack. And when they and their father saw the bundles of money, they were afraid. And Jacob, their father, said to them, You have bereaved me. Joseph is no more. Simeon is no more. And you want to take Benjamin? All these things are against me. And then Reuben spoke to his father, saying, Kill my two sons if I do not bring him back to you. Put him in my hands, and I will bring him back to you. But he said, My son shall not go down with you. For his brother is dead, and he is left alone. If any calamity should befall him along the way in which you go, then you would bring down my gray hair with sorrow to the grave. And we move along to chapter 43. Now the famine was severe in the land, and it came to pass when they had eaten up the grain which they had brought from Egypt, that their father said to them, Go back, buy us a little food. But Judah spoke to him, saying, The man solemnly warned us, saying, You shall not see my face unless your brother is with you. If you send our brother with us, we will go down and buy you food. But if you will not send him, 
we will not go down. For the man said to us, you shall not see my face unless your brother is with you. And Israel, their father, said, Why did you deal so wrongfully with me as to tell the man whether you had still another brother? But they said, The man asked us pointedly about ourselves and our families, saying, Is your father still alive? Have you another brother? And we told him according to these words. Could we possibly have known that he would say, bring your brother down? And then Judah said to Israel, his father, send the lad with me and we'll arise and go it, that we may live and not die. Both we and you and also our little ones. I myself will be surety for him. From my hand, you shall require him. If I do not bring him back to you and set him before you, then let me bear the blame forever. For if we had not lingered, surely by now we would have returned the second time. And their father Israel said to them, If it must be so, then do this. Take some of the best fruits of the land in your vessels and carry down a present for the man, a little balm and, and a little honey, spices and, and myrrh, pistachio nuts and, and almonds. Take double money in your hand and take back in your hand the money that was returned in the mouth of your sacks. Perhaps it was an oversight. Take your brother also and arise. Go back to the man. And may God Almighty give you mercy before the man, that he may release your other brother and Benjamin. If I am bereaved, I am bereaved. So the men took that present and Benjamin, and they took double money in their hand and arose and went down to Egypt. And they stood before Joseph. And when Joseph saw Benjamin with them, he said to the steward of his house, take these men to my home and slaughter an animal and make ready for these men will dine with me at noon. And then the man did as Joseph ordered. And the man brought the men into Joseph's house. Now the men were afraid because they were brought into Joseph's house. And they said, it is because of the money which was returned in our sacks the first time that we are brought in so that he may make a case against us and seize us to take us as slaves with our donkeys. Boy, guilt. Satan will take that guilt. He'll build a big case in your head, won't he? And he did with them. Man, they have this case all out of sorts. And when they drew near to the steward of Joseph's home, they talked with him at the door of the house. And they said, Oh, sir, uh, we indeed came down the first time to buy food. But it happened when we came to the encampment that we opened our sacks and there each man's money was still in the mouth of his sack. Our money in full weight. So we have brought it back in our hand. And we have brought down other money in our hands to buy food. We do not know who put our money in our sacks. But he said, Peace be with you. Do not be afraid. Your God and the God of your father has given you treasure in your sacks. I had your money. And then he brought Simeon out to them. So the man brought the men into Joseph's house and gave them water 
and they washed their feet, and he gave their donkeys feed, and then they made the present ready for Joseph, coming at noon, for they heard that they would eat bread there. And when Joseph came home, they brought him the present which was in their hand into the house, and they bowed down before him to the earth. Here we're seeing more of his original dreams as a young boy coming to pass, aren't we? And all that he suffered is being played out the way God showed him. And then he asked them about their well-being. And he said, Is your father well? The old man whom you spoke, is he still alive? And they answered, your servant, our father, is in good health. He is still alive. And they bowed their heads down and prostrated themselves. Then he lifted his eyes and he saw his brother Benjamin, his mother's son. And he said, is this your younger brother of whom you spoke to me? And he said, God be gracious to you, my son. Now his heart yearned for his brother. So Joseph made haste and sought somewhere to weep. And he went into his chamber and he wept there. And then he washed his face and he came out and he restrained himself and said, serve the bread. So they set him a place by himself and them by themselves and the Egyptians who ate with him by themselves because the Egyptians could not eat food with the Hebrews. For that is an abomination to the Egyptians. So you see the ways that Joseph has been suffering? And they sat before him, <clears throat> the firstborn, according to his birthright, and the youngest, according to his youth. And the men looked in astonishment at one another. How does he know this? And then he took servings to them from before him, but Benjamin's serving was five times as much as any of theirs. Joseph is getting them real good, isn't he? So they drank and they were merry with him. And there we have the reading of the Old Testament for today. We move right along to the New Covenant, the New Testament. We are still in the first gospel, Matthew, Matthew, and we are still in chapter 13. It's a long chapter, and we are up to verse 47. Again, Jesus teaches, the kingdom of heaven is like a dragnet that was cast into the sea and gathered some of every kind, which when it was full, they drew to shore, and they sat down, and they gathered the good into vessels, but threw the bad away. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come forth, separate the wicked from among the just, and cast them into the furnace of fire. Are you getting this? Because this is still yet to happen. And we may be involved. There will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. I'm sure we are talking about your eternal judgment. And Jesus said to them, have you understood all these things? And they said to him, Yes, Lord. And then he said to them, 
Therefore, every scribe instructed concerning the kingdom of heaven is like a householder who brings out of his treasure things new and old. Now it came to pass when Jesus had finished these parables that he departed from there. And when he had come to his own country, he taught them in their synagogue so that they were astonished and said, where did this man get this wisdom and these mighty words? Is this not the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary and his brothers, James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas? And his sisters, are they not all with us? Where then did this man get all these things? So they were offended at him. But Jesus said to them, a prophet is not without honor except in his own country and in his own house. And haven't you found that out being a believer in Jesus? Sometimes the people that give you the hardest time are those of your family that you live with under the same roof. Now he did not do many works there because of their unbelief. Their unbelief. They couldn't receive. Mm, what a shame. We move right along to chapter 14. At that time, Herod the Tetrarch heard the report about Jesus and said to his servants, This is John the Baptist. He is risen from the dead. And therefore, these powers are at work in him. Herod's own guilt haunting him. And look at how Satan takes him off on a rabbit trail. For Herod had laid hold of John and bound him, and had put him in prison for the sake of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because John had said to him, it is not lawful for you to have her. And although he wanted to put him to death, he feared the multitude because they counted him, John, as a prophet. And he was, Jesus declared him a prophet. But when Herod's birthday was celebrated, the daughter of Herodias danced before them and pleased Herod. Therefore, he promised with an oath to give her whatever she might ask. So she, having been prompted by her mother, said, Give me John the Baptist's head here on a platter. And the king was sorry. Nevertheless, his pride came in because of the oaths and because of those who sat with him. He commanded it to be given to her. So he sent and had John beheaded in prison. And his head was brought on a platter and given to the girl, and she brought it to her mother. And then his disciples came and took away the body and buried it and went and told Jesus. whoa And we are seeing beheadings today. Satan, desperate, throwing all of his last disgusting evil things before he is put down. 
We move right along to Psalm 18, which we have already begun reading that psalm. And we will pick up with verse 16. Psalm number 18, picking up with verse 16. He sent from above. He took me, David cries. He drew me out of many waters. He delivered me from my strong enemy, from those who hated me, for they were too strong for me. They confronted me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my support. He also brought me out into a broad place. He delivered me because he delighted in me. And wasn't that a comfort to David's heart? And isn't that a wonderful sentence for us to hang on to? He delivered me because he delighted in me. The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands. He has recompensed me. For I have kept the ways of the Lord and have not wickedly departed from my God. For all his judgments were before me, and I did not put away his statutes from me. I was also blameless before him, and I kept myself from my iniquity. Therefore the Lord has recompensed me according to my righteousness according to the cleanness of my hands in his sight. With the merciful, you will show yourself merciful. And with a blameless man, you will show yourself blameless. With the pure, you will show yourself pure. And with the devious, you will show yourself shrewd. For you will save the humble people, but will bring down haughty looks. For you will light my lamp. The Lord my God will enlighten my darkness. For by you, I can run through a troop and leap over a wall. Hallelujah. Well, hallelujah, because you're my strength and my shield, and you give power to all. Hallelujah. Well, hallelujah. I am free from condemnation. Jesus is the rock of my salvation. I can run through a troop and leap over a wall. Hallelujah. Well, hallelujah. Isn't that good? It is God who arms me with strength. For who is God except the Lord? And who is a rock except our God? It is God who arms me with strength and makes my way perfect. He makes my feet like the feet of deer and sets me on my high places. And, oh, please, go see Kathy's graphics. Wow, Kathy, you have some beauties, and she has a wonderful one showing you how the deer can go straight up the side of a mountain, just hopping from little itty-bitty ledge to itty-bitty ledge with very sure feet. I've seen that six times in Israel. It is amazing. It's amazing. And so are the rest of your graphics. Thank you, Melissa, for seeing that they get different places as a witness. He makes my feet like the feet of deer and sets me on my high places. He teaches my hands to make war so that my arms can bend a bow of bronze. And oh, you have a, a graphic of a lady there and she's got that bow in her hands with a look on her face like, I know how to handle this. You have also given me the shield of, my, of your salvation. Your right hand has held me up. Your gentleness has made me great. 
You enlarge my path under me. So my feet did not slip. And we marvel at that psalm, marvel at that psalm. And we go ahead and we close up our reading for January 21 with Proverbs chapter 4, verses 7 through 10. Proverbs chapter 4, 7 through 10. I hope you have little markers in the Old Testament, New Testament, Psalms, and Proverbs so you can just flip every day. And here is Proverbs 4, 7. Wisdom is the principal thing. And we've had other Proverbs before this today, haven't we, talking about this leads up to this final thought here. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And in all you're getting, get understanding. Exalt her. And she will promote you. She will bring you honor when you embrace her. She will place on your head an ornament of grace, a crown of glory she will deliver to you. Hear, my son, and receive my sayings, and the years of your life will be many. And that's wisdom, isn't it? And Kathy has a beautiful graphic of a crown of glory that could be put on a head. Hallelujah. You all are so marvelous. You wonderful brothers and sisters, you sons and daughters of the Most High God. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Let's go to prayer. You know, before we pray, here's a good thought. Satan doesn't even own the keys to his own house. Don't give him the keys to yours. That's a good one to meditate upon. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Father God, we want to thank you for all of these marvelous scriptures that you have written down. You had over 40 writers at different times in years. It is marvelous because there is no discrepancy. All of the writers blend together very nicely in telling the history in telling the wisdom, in telling the Psalms, in giving instruction, and many more things. Lord, we want to thank you for those who were anointed by you and they knew they were and they wrote it down. And praise God, praise you, Father, because we have it today in our hands. Now we have it in our minds and in our hearts and in our spirit. And we can be strong and walk in righteousness with you. Father God, we hold up Israel right first thing. And Lord, we'd ask that you would increase even in every one of your people, particularly in all the soldiers of the IDF, the Israeli Defense Forces, and in the political people in power. Bless and anoint. Prime Minister Bibi Netanyahu, precious God, please. And all of those in the Knesset, all of those in military authority, making the decisions, striving to hear from you, I'm sure, as to what to do. Millions of enemies in countries all around them in this little tiny postage stamp size Israel. Father God, you are proving yourself strong and mighty and well able, <clears throat> and you will take care of your people. Father, we want to lift up all of those who have their hearts broken, 
who've had horrible beheadings and terrible tortures that they were forced to look at, to watch, many of them their own loved ones. Father God, we hold up those who know they have captives of their own friends and relatives, captive by the enemy. <clears throat> Precious Lord, we are believing that you are taking care of them. We are believing, Lord, that Holy Spirit is ministering to the fearful, to the brokenhearted, to those that just can hardly get one foot in front of the other for suffering through the terror that they have lived through. We can't even imagine. We can't even imagine. Father God, please, let Holy Ghost come and abundantly comfort, abundantly help that they can let the horrible things rest with you and somehow go on with another day. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. You already died for all of them. Holy Spirit, please bring all of your Jewish people to you. Father God, please bring them to you by the power of the Holy Spirit. We understand many of the enemy have had dreams and visions like we've been reading about in the time of Joseph. And that when they've told it and compared, they're all the same. And they have become believers. So you are doing marvelous works, marvelous miracles. Many, many of the Jews have become believers when their back was against the wall. And we thank you and we ask you, Holy Spirit, please help them to grow in you. Help them to keep reading Torah. <clears throat> help them to keep and go on and read their own prophets. For now, having accepted you, there will be wisdom and understanding as they read and study. Father, help them as they pray at the wall, the Western Wall. Help them, Lord, as they recite Torah, that it would leap off the page for them. Help all the rabbis, Lord, the rabbis, the rabbis, in their teachings, in their comfort for the people. Father God, draw them all together in a purpose of survival. Draw them all together, Lord. Let old things pass away. And behold, let them coming together be the new thing for strength, for clarity, for wisdom, for power, for belief in you. Precious God, we hold up friends and relatives that we have, Lord, and their issues, their problems, also rejoicing at the many victories. And Father God, we thank you. We give you praise and honor and glory. You have kept us safe. And we know that many enemies have crossed over that border, just walked in illegally. And Father, we thank you that those at the top right now will be dealt with by the Congress, will be dealt with by the law, many of them traitors to the American people, to the American country, many of them breakers of our Constitution, breakers of the law, selfish, taking bribes. The list is long, Lord, and you know a lot more than we know. Father God, we'd ask, that you would have your way with this entire situation. And we will give you the praise for the victories. All of God's people cried a hearty amen and went about a beautiful day of worshiping the Lord. Let's worship him with all our hearts. All our hearts. 
I surrender all. I surrender all. All to Jesus I surrender. I surrender all.